Welcome to Ag on Wheels. Today, we find ourselves in the Rio Grande Valley with someone very special, Jackson Wallace, who probably grows one of your favorite snacks from Frito-Lay, which is potato chips. Hey, Jackson. Hey, Michelle. So potatoes are not the only thing you grow. You all actually are a very diverse farm, and I'm interested to learn about it. So will you take me around and show me? Absolutely, let's go. Okay, let's, do you have potato chips I can snack on while we walk around? We have some in the office. Okay, let's go. Okay. There's not a lot of potato growers here in the Grand Valley, maybe a handful of them. What made you want to come down here? Well, when I was growing up in Wimberley, I would come down here for the summers and work on the farm. My dad was growing potatoes back then. We've been growing potatoes for over 60 years, and you know, I really enjoyed the potato growing process and seeing how everything was run and getting to see the final product. So tell me, with potatoes, how strenuous is it to grow a crop like that? Oh, it's very strenuous. It's really, really chemical heavy. It's real water heavy. It's really important, especially down here where the climate is so much hotter. You have a very limited window. From leafy greens to potatoes, what is your favorite crop to grow? Favorite crop to grow would be carrots. Carrots? You're supposed to say potatoes. I hope Frida Lay is not watching. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the carrots. Why are carrots your favorite? Well, you know, they're pretty straightforward to growing. As long as you keep the tops healthy, you should have a good crop. So it's not as strenuous as a potato is. Right, right. And I think that's really important too because here in the Rio Grande Valley, I think a lot of people aren't unaware of all the different soil types we have just depending on where you are. Right, just and in our fields alone, we have several different soil types. We have a sandier loam and we have a more deep and clay soil. And so those products are really crucial for getting a better yield, so. That's right, that's what we aim for. <laughs> Since carrots are your favorite crop to grow, naturally here we are in a carrot field. That's right. So tell us a little bit about carrots. How long does it take from when you plant until harvest? Typically it takes about 120 to 180 days depending on the size of the carrot you're looking for. Right here we're in a slicer field so they're a little bit smaller. We can take them out a little bit quicker. And then we have jumbos for Campbell's Soup and Pig Sweet that take a little bit longer. We've harvested some that are as old as 200 days old. 200 days old. So when you say spliced carrots, are those the ones we find in the store, the fresh carrots? They're the thinner carrots, yeah, about an inch and a quarter in diameter, and that's the maximum. I personally think any crop is hard to grow, and I have utmost respect for farmers. What is your biggest challenge here with carrots? Well, weed control is a big concern we always have, and you know, mitigating the weevil is also another one. So what do you do to take care of the weeds and the insects? Well, pre-emergence, we use Caparol. It's a Syngenta product and it really helps with mitigating the weed and it takes care of some weevils. But you don't want to have that in your food. No, I definitely don't want to be eating bugs or weeds. And I also think too, it helps with the health of the crop because you can't harvest or grow a crop when there's weeds everywhere. That's right. And bugs for that matter. <laughs> I don't want that protein, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I always say in my episodes that it takes faith and family to farm, really to be in agriculture. What is one of your biggest memories or most impactful memories that you've had with your family on the farm? Wow, the most impactful memories I've had. Uh, I've got, I've had a few that stick with me that aren't great. You know, <laughs> I was in eighth grade and I was driving a tractor. This is before we had cabs. I was driving a disc in a sunflower field and I high centered that tractor and broke the drive shaft and my dad was not happy about it. You know what? Thank goodness you said that because I'm an awful driver and now I don't feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows it. Everyone knows I'm a bad driver. Jackson, your dad is really a staple when it comes to valley agriculture here. Uh, such a hardworking man. What is one valuable lesson that he's taught you? To trust in the Lord and do your best. You have to. That's right. Because we all know Mother Nature likes to play games with us, doesn't right. she? You're at the mercy of Mother Nature when you're out here. That's right. Farming takes a special breed. 
you know, it's, it's strenuous, it's hard, it's emotional. What is one thing that gets you up out of bed every day? There's never a shortage of problems to be solved. And you know, it's always, farming is about reacting. And putting out fires, you've always got something to do. And there are a lot of many victories throughout the day. And I cherish those little many victories. All right, Jackson, we've learned about carrots, but now we're on to everyone's favorite, potatoes. Yep. Tell me a little bit about how do you plant potatoes? Is it transplanted? Is it direct seed? So we get the potato seed from Frito-Lay. They have their own varieties that they grow and it's separate and then they ship it to us. And then we cut that into a desired seed piece, which we're, we're aiming for about a 2.3 ounce seed piece on average. And uh, we treat that with Maxim. It's a seed treatment, a powder seed treatment. And then we load that up into the planter and we use elatus in the furrow as a seed treatment as well. And what is the purpose of treating the seed before it goes into the ground? It helps it get you know, sprouted and it protects it from any pests and it kind of from any rotting as well. Well, we know here in the valley we have a lot of insects, probably more than I care to name. So what is one common insect that you find here with the potatoes? Well, we've had an issue in the past with the zebra chip and uh, they, they did a lot of work to find the treatment and how to effectively traverse through the zebra chip problem. So whenever these potatoes, when y'all receive them and you said they're sliced, are they cut into halves or quarters? Does it matter? It does matter and depending on the size of the potato. So if it's a real big potato, we'd like to cut it a couple times to get it to, get it to the desired seed piece. But if it's smaller, it'll just drop all the way down to the bottom and our seed cutter has levels. And if it's on the top level, it'll get cut twice. If it's in the middle level, it'll get cut once. And if it's dropped all the way to the bottom, it won't get cut at all. All right, Jackson, so when this planter plants the potatoes, how deep is it going? About five inches, between four to five inches. And how far apart are they? Well, depending on the variety, eight to 12 inches. You know, right here, I think we're at 8.7. 8 gotcha, and so whenever these are planted and your job is done, not really, but while you wait and tend for your little baby crops, how long does it take for a potato from plant to harvest? 90 days. That's it's a 90-day crop, yep. You don't get to rest long, do you? Oh, no, it's a quick turnaround. <laughs> this particular seed was cut twice because of the size. And that's about what you want. So here in the Rio Grande Valley, we had something that doesn't happen often, I guess since the 80s. We had an awful freeze, which killed off a lot of our vegetables, our citrus, and you as a grower lost your potatoes. Yes. So what kind of weather do these potatoes prefer? Well, they can't go below freezing once they're out of the ground. And they don't really like the, the hotter temperatures either. So anything on the extremes on either end aren't prime conditions for growing. They just stay neutral. Right. Can't really ask for more. <laughs> Jackson, thank you so much for having us out here and showing us a little bit about the carrots and potatoes. I wish we had more time. Thank you for coming, Michelle. It's yeah. been fun. Thank you so much, Jackson. And you'll see me around, because guess what? I just live right across the street. Yeah. So anyone want potatoes? I'll come get you some. <laughs> and where will I be next? Only God knows. We'll see you next time on Ag on Wheels. <laughs>